Greetings, folks. Sealer here, and welcome to the channel's first video of the year for 2020. I do want to extend my personal best wishes to everyone for a very happy and prosperous new year. I also need to thank everyone for your interest and support in the channel. Uh, we had set a year end goal in 2019 to reach 300 subscribers, and we ended up with 305. So we beat the goal. And again, thank you very much, everyone, for your support. Now, I think many of you know I'm a big fan of German ships, especially the cruisers. And so I thought a German cruiser replay would be a good way to start the year. And this is a total winner of a match, uh, courtesy of my colleague Lynn Wilkie, who is sailing in the premium tier 8 German heavy cruiser, the Prince Eugen. Uh, I had the distinct privilege and honor of witnessing Lynn's performance in this match as I was divisioned with him while sailing the uh, Tier 8 Soviet battleship, the Vladivostok. And we are in a Tier 10 domination match on Shatter, and there are Tier 10 aircraft carriers involved. So definitely could be a tough match for a Tier 8 ship. Now, Lin's build focuses on survivability and his gun systems. And uh, again, he's going to show us a very good outing in this ship. So he's going to move into the Charlie Cap with the Harugumo. Our allied gearing is going wide uh, to spot the flank and do his torpedoing thing. And in my experience on this map, especially at Charlie, as our team claims first blood, thanks to a dev strike from our Iowa uh, against the Atago. Uh, but my experience on this map is that the Charlie Cap tends to have this long standoff uh, because the, there's this very large island in the middle and uh, any ship of any size and class can move in, stay very protected, uh, even if it is de detected, but it can stay very protected uh, and, um, and contest the cap. Now, the Allies are going to uh, take the cap uh, uncontested, but the Jean Bar uh, is going to move in and start contesting it. Now, Lynn just got dropped uh, by the carrier, but he shot down the first two of what will turn out to be many airplane. Uh, the Prince Eugen and the Hipper class uh, have very good AA for tier eight ships. And Lynn being the good uh, German cruiser player that he is, uh, takes the, uh, the German hydro as he should. As we just saw a spread of torpedoes that uh, were headed south uh, from the, one of the two Shimikazes that's on the enemy team. Uh, but uh, as I mentioned, the, the cap here is being contested. Lin's going to back up here. He does have his hydro running so that he's keeping at least some of these ships, including the Jean Bart, lit up. Uh, the Alaska is intermittently getting detected. The Alaska will, will move back into the cap as well. And there we just saw see the Shimakaze that is over here on the east flank as well. Now, uh, looking at the tactical situation, the opponents have taken Bravo. Uh, and uh, so they're getting points from their cap. The Allies are not getting points from Charlie because it's being contested. The uh, Allied Lightning had moved into Alpha for a while, but then it looks like he uh, got pushed out, either because of radar or planes or something, and he's headed back over to uh, to Bravo, and he's going to end up getting into a brief exchange uh, with the other Shimikaze uh, that took the Bravo cap. Uh, and the Shimikaze is going to get pushed out here, and the light you can see the lightning starting to move in. Now, Lin is backing up here. He's got the Shimikaze that's over here on the over at Charlie Lit, and uh, Lin also has Vigilance on his ship. So, between the German Hydro and Vigilance, he's detecting these torpedoes basically as they're physically coming off the Shimikaze. Uh, so th nobody on the, the Allies teams has any excuse to take any of these torpedoes. Now, the uh, the Allied Iowa uh, that was over at Alpha that had de dev struck uh, the Atago, uh, he pushed into the Alpha cap and got focused out. Uh, he was just overextended. So the opponents actually have a much better position on Alpha. They've two, they have two destroyers over there. Uh, and they have a larger representation, and so they will be able to take the Alpha Cap. The Lightning is now uh, getting Bravo secured. In fact, he has just taken that. Uh, so now the Allies are going to start getting points from at least Bravo. The Allies have fallen behind in points, although just modestly, because the ship counts are even, uh, but the opponents were getting points from Bravo for a while when the Allies were not getting points from any of their Caps. And Lynn's just trying to get some protected shots here on the opposing battleships that are over on the 9 and 10 line. 
the gearing uh, probably had to peel away uh, because he was either between the radar from the Missouri or the Shimakaze. Uh, he may have been uh, some slightly overextended, but I think he's made a good choice here to, to back off. The Allies do take down the Massachusetts, so uh, now they are back to a one-ship advantage, uh, and they've gotten a point lead again because uh, one of the, the ship lead, but also, they again, they were getting points from the Bravo Cap. Now, uh, Lynn is, I think, going to come under an aerial attack here fairly shortly as well, but we've now detected the Jean Bar that's trying to sneak his way into the west sort of this west channel that's on the charlie side lynn's going to send some torpedoes here to discourage the 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 jean bar from pushing more forward uh you can see that lynn's aa is going off again he's trying to provide some uh defense for his team he is going to get dropped again by the um by the carrier but he's going to shoot down i think a total of well he's shot down up 10 planes so far uh, so again, like I said, the, the Hipper class does have very good AA, and he seems to be doing pretty well against the uh, the Midway. Now, the, this, the opposing Midway is going to be turn out to be no slouch. I mean, when we look at the leaderboard at the end of the game, uh, he's going to do very well individually. Uh, so I don't think that uh, he's being casual about his drops onto Lin, and Lin's AA is serving him well. Now, Lin's got to try to get a better angle on the Jean Bar here. Uh, and the Jean Bar does take out the Allied Musashi. Uh, the frankly, the Musashi. I don't understand what he was doing. He uh, he basically beached broadside to the Jean Bar. The French battleships, their AP has among the best penetration uh, at caliber and at tier. Uh, and so I suspect that the the Musashi was simply citadeled into oblivion. And the Jean Bar, obviously, like I said, was able to get the kill. Lin's trying to come over here to try to get a better angle uh, on the Jean Bar, put the Jean Bar into a crossfire between himself and, and and myself, so that where you can see I've moved into the Charlie Cap as well. Uh, Lin's getting some secondary hits here. He's also sending his torpedoes. Uh, now the uh, one of the advantages or one of the strengths, I should say of the German heavy cruisers starting at tier eight is that they have a 27 millimeter bow and that allows them to bow tank uh, AP that is below 400 millimeters. So the 380 millimeter rifles from the Jean Bar, uh, he cannot, uh, the Jean Bar cannot overmatch Lin. Now Lin has, uh, did go broadside there very briefly, but I think at that point he was pretty confident that he had the kill on the Jean Bar, which he uh, was able to do. And now he's able to get back into some concealment uh, and one of the other strengths uh, specifically of the Prince Eugen is that it gets the repair party consumable. And that was a buff that was introduced to the Prince Eugen early in 2019. Uh, to, and it draws a very clear distinction between the performance characteristics of the Prince Eugen and her sister ship, the Hipper, uh, which is the Tech Tree Tier 8 uh, German cruiser. Uh, so the Hipper has slightly better concealment. It has a faster reload at 10.5 seconds on its guns, whereas the Prince Eugen is 13 seconds. Uh, but the Hipper uh, has a uh, slightly larger hit point pool, and it has uh, and it has uh, the heal. Now th the Shimakaze here on the east flank has pushed out again. Lin again has activated his hydro, so he's seeing these torpedoes literally as they are coming off the ship. That's how close the Shimakaze is, but it is also a reflection of Lin's uh, ability to detect. The, uh, the torpedoes. Uh, Lin and I are both putting fire on the Shimikaze. This was frankly a suicide run for the Shimikaze. And this is, not, again, not something that's uncommon uh, that I see on the Shatter uh, um, map at Charlie, uh, where uh, because of the long standoffs, uh, teams tend to be very, uh, can be quite impatient in uh, being able to uh, try to drive the opponents off of the cap and uh and you'll see situations like that where there's sort of this suicide run uh to, to try to dislodge the opponents now we have retained the charlie cap and we're able to peel out of the cap because the opponents have not moved back in but i think they will end up doing so now looking back at the tactical situation uh for the moment the opponents took bravo back uh from uh Lynn's team, as uh, myself and the Vladivostok, I'm able to get, I think, at least one Citadel on the Musashi over on the flank and finish him off. 
uh, but our team at, but our team has now uh, gotten the upper hand at alpha and is now going to take the alpha cap uh, and we also have a what looks like a three ship advantage uh, so our team is actually doing quite well at this point uh, looks like the Seattle uh, the allied Seattle has got gotten out of alpha he may have simply been getting focused by the carrier and couldn't really stay in the cap so uh, Lynn's going to head toward Bravo uh, to try to get that cap back because it looks like that's been abandoned. The opponents, again, have moved into Charlie. So right now the Allies are not getting points from any cap. So even though that they have a ship advantage, um, the point spread is not that significant uh, given the cap situation. Uh, the Ally Jean Bar is now moving into Charlie's or moving into Alpha, and so he may be able to take that cap for the Allies. And then... Uh, uh, I'm peeling, you see myself uh, in the Blood of Vostok where uh, I'm it's picking on the map. I'm um, basically kiting the uh, two ships that are on the east flank, the Alaska and the Missouri, and basically try to keep the cap defended. Um, and so I have no intention in the Blood of Vostok of trying to push in and put myself into a crossfire between the Missouri and the Alaska. My primary interest is keeping the cap reset and sort of defend that flank and keeping keep them from pushing around the flank and getting on our side if they are able to push south. Lynn, again, has moved over towards Bravo. It's getting an AP shot here on, I think that was a Mogami, or it was certainly a, a cruiser. Um, and he lands a nice Citadel hit. Again, a, a strength of the German cruisers, as I think many know, is the AP uh, is unmatched uh, at caliber with regard to alpha damage. However, the shells are quite light, and so the penetration angles are not very good. You, you tend to have to have very good broadsides in order to get consistent alpha from the AP. So the, while the AB, AP from the German cruisers can be devastating, uh, the conditions have to be fairly optimal uh, to get those really big hits that you sometimes see from the Hipper class, from the Hron, from the Hindenburg uh, on opponents. Um, I have also confirmed that um, that uh, the heavy cruisers, not just the Germans, but just in general, uh, they can citadel some battleships in very close quarters like the... the um, the British battleships and so on. So uh, the the AP is no joke. Uh, but again, it at least on the German cruisers, uh, there's it. You sort of have to have optimal conditions for it to work out really well. Now the uh, the allies, the opponents, excuse me, have thinned the lead, uh, of the ship lead a little bit as Lynn is dodging the torps here from the midway, uh, and he did help secure the Bravo cap. So Lynn has two cap. Uh, ribbons under his belt in addition to 20 plane kills uh the mogami that uh or i'm sorry that was a brindisi that uh, uh that was over on the north side has been taken out and then the missouri i think it was that was over in charlie was sunk by uh, i think it was by um, torpedoes from the gearing and then i in the vladivostok even though i'm quite far from an objective i'm mainly just kiting the the alaska and I, I my intention is just to keep him occupied and add out of the cap and take him out uh lynn was dropped again by the carrier he's getting his last heal in on the uh on the prince Eugen, and then he's going to come out and he sees that the midway uh is going to start coming uh away from the island and he's going to be broadside to lynn uh, lynn again is shooting down some more planes here he's clearly the focus of the carrier at this point because He's the, probably the biggest threat. Uh, see myself, I've just sunk the Alaska, and I'm going to be able to turn around and start heading back. Uh, but at this point, our game, we've now just sunk the uh, second of the two Shimikazes, thanks to our carrier. And so now it's just uh, six ships against one. So we have this game pretty well locked up. Uh, we are finally now taking Alpha, or actually our carrier moved up. Uh, to take the cap uh, unfortunately our uh, we do lose our alaska uh, but at this point the game is pretty well wrapped up lynn has lost his engine again for the second time he's just waiting for his damage control to come off cooldown and then he's going to be able to react to you know get his engine going although maybe he just decides to hold uh the damage control for the moment um in anticipation that he gets dropped again and maybe gets set on fire but here is the midway he has the ap loaded and he is going to land a number of citadels over the next uh, two or three salvos. There's the first one. 
Uh, so he's actually going to take out most of the health of this midway over the course of three or four salvos with quite a few citadels. He's uh, now gotten up to 90. That was a 20k hit. Um, so that's a reflection of the strength of the German uh, cruiser AP. Here comes the next salvo towards the midway. I think he lands some more citadels here, another one. Uh, so now he's up to 108,000. So before he engaged this uh, this carrier, he was at a respectable 75,000 in damage, but he's now racked up a lot of damage very quickly. He's getting dropped again by the carrier, but again, this is unsurprising since he's the one that's putting the pressure on the carrier. And uh, the uh, he's now shot down, he's up to 28 planes, but that he's got more to come. Uh, so I think that uh, he's uh, this... He's going to get um, some rocket planes that are going to come in here, and he's going to shoot down even more of those. Uh, and then he's also going to shoot down the fighter squadron that's been dropped. Uh, so as a result, between all these plane kills that he's going to get over the next minute or so, there it is, he has just earned AA Defense Expert. So keep in mind that this is a Tier 8 cruiser against a Tier 10 battleship, or a Tier 10 aircraft carrier, excuse me. And so uh, it's still a very impressive outing uh, for uh, for Lynn. And, He's working to get uh, the kill on the uh, on the midway here as he shoots down another plane. Just needs a couple more salvos. Now, this is one of the weaknesses of the German cruisers is that their HE shells, while they do have buffed penetration, the alpha is quite poor, uh, and so it takes him more uh, salvos to to get the damage in that he needs on the midway. You're going to see a comment in chat from myself asking folks to let uh, Lynn get the kill on the midway since he has done most of the work. Although you do see some shots coming in from other team, uh, from teammates. But with this salvo, he is going to land another hit on the midway, set a fire, and kill the midway and win the game for the team. So very impressive outing, Lynn. 127,000 in damage, 38 planes uh, downed, two kills, two caps. But the real kicker here is the XP. Almost 3,500 XP. I'm sorry, 40 planes down, including his fighter. Uh, so almost 3,500 base XP. So very impressive outing, Lynn. And this was a really good match and a good demonstration of the capabilities of this ship. We hope you enjoyed the replay and the commentary. Please do leave your comments below. And as always, we hope to see you out there and we wish you happy sailing.